Guys, today we're talking the most invisible and lightweight sunscreens and boy have I got some for you. How I found these most wonderful sunscreens was actually asking what you guys wanted most. So here are the results that you guys told us. 59% of you said that when it comes to sunscreens you don't really care what type it is as long as it feels and looks good. Then we asked you what was the most important and almost half of you said that the feeling that it left on your skin was the most important. And then lastly, we asked you which finish you prefer. A satin finish was the winner, leaving dewy and matte closely behind. So that's how I rounded up these seven sunscreens to share with you guys. So make sure you subscribe and let's get going. So before we dive into the review, I actually want to talk about something really important. Sunscreens come at the very end of our skincare routine during the day. So what this means theoretically is that we already have that nourishment, that glow factor from our moisturizer. So what a sunscreen does is really up to you if you want it to add more glow, more dew, or you want a sunscreen to work into rebalancing and kind of like subduing that shine. So depending on what your skin type is, you will look for a different texture. Texture. So I'm combination and a little bit more on the oily side, especially during summer. So that's my vantage point But that's not to say that dry skin girls cannot enjoy these because I think you definitely will they are universal Starting off with this guy. This is the numbers in Pureful Calming Water Sunscreen with SPF 50 plus PA++++. Plus 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 plus. So the texture is a true water cream. So you can see here it has this really wonderful nozzle. I don't know why this gives me so much satisfaction. And then you blend it in and it's like the most soft and silky water cream, like true to the name water cream. And then when you first put it on, there's also this slight cooling effect, which I think makes it really great for people, especially living in super humid, super hot areas like New York summers. Now the finish of this is radiant. So it's very much skin-like and not super shiny. And this is designed for sensitive skin. And one of the first ingredients is actually licorice root water, which is really good for calming and soothing inflammation on the skin. And then it's also got centella and mugwort for those soothing qualities. So this overall is a soothing, lightweight gel cream sunscreen that's completely invisible. Enough chat, let me show you what it looks like on the day that I wore it. For my routine, I'm gonna keep it the same the entire week while we're testing these, and this is going to be what I use. Toner from Caudalie, the serum from Super Egg, and then the gel moisturizer from Beauty of Josa. Going into the sunscreen now, let me just show you what this looks like. So smooth. It's completely invisible. Doesn't even catch onto my hairs and make them white. And then I looked into the formulation and there's actually an ingredient that gives this finish a very soft focused look. So that's why I said it looks radiant, but it's not shiny, it's not oily, and it's not greasy. And that's why I think this really stands out in my book and is my new current favorite. Okay, so it's been two hours. I wanna show you what it looks like. It's like not greasy, it's actually not sticky. My skin looks so healthy, wow. Very impressed. It's not shiny. So final thoughts for this one. Pilling, none. Consistency on a scale of one being gel, 10 being a thick cream. This sits at about two. Super lightweight. Then on the scale of stickiness, where zero is like no feel on the skin, it just completely evaporates, which doesn't exist for a sunscreen. And 10 being that it's super sticky. This one is four. It feels moisturized, but it's not greasy. Then for the shine factor, with zero being completely matte, five being that satin finish, and then 10 being shine bright like a diamond, this is the perfect five. Truly the porridge that was just right. I like, I couldn't even lie guys. This was amazing. Then invisibility with zero being invisible, 10 is I can't see my natural skin. This was zero. There is no white cast. Question, how do we apply over makeup? So I have three ways. First one includes using a makeup sponge and an SPF lotion. So using one of these makeup sponges that you can also buy individually, apply sunscreen onto the sponge or directly onto your face and just pat away. 
pat, 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 dab, dab, dab. And for this method, it's really great if you can find an SPF that has some alcohol content because this makes it apply and dry down quickly for a really great application. Second method is using a blotting paper and sunscreen stick. First, I like to dab away the excess oils from my skin with blotting paper. Then find a sun stick that matches your skin type. So matte for oily skin or satin for dry combination. And then apply starting from the inner areas of the face to the outside. And if you can, you can do about four to five layers of this for reapplication. And that'll give you more protection than obviously just one layer. But just make sure you're wiping away the exposed part of the stick before using it and also after. Next is sun sprays. I personally don't enjoy this method because the formulations of these are just typically so oily and you need a lot more spray than you think. And fun fact about sun sprays is you're actually supposed to spray it onto your hand and then apply it onto the skin, much like a lotion, because that's how it's tested to get the SPF rating that's labeled. So if you just spray it onto the face like this, which is how people typically use it, then you're actually getting less protection, but you know, a little bit is better than none. Now moving on to a very highly anticipated new beauty of Joseon sunscreen. So this is the Ginseng Moist Sun Serum. And this one was really interesting to me. <laughs> Okay, so what is it? It's a chemical sunscreen. It's their latest one. And I think it's designed to sit in between the existing rice and probiotic sunscreen that everyone loves and the matte sun stick that was made in collaboration with Ramon. This one is supposed to be for combination oily skin that sits right in the middle. The texture of this, as the name suggests, is like a serum where it's this lightweight, transparent, gel-like consistency. So when you first apply it, it actually has this water bursting effect where it feels really lightweight. It completely like starts to sink into the skin. However, it's the finish that surprised me most because as lightweight as it is, it's still quite glowy and dewy and actually leaves that like protective feeling on my skin. And that just wasn't what I was expecting necessarily for a serum that was supposed to sit in between the original and the matte stick. So in my mind, I was like, oh, this is gonna be skin-like, it's not gonna be overly dewy, but actually it leaves a very similar finish to the original, which I thought was interesting. And looking into the ingredients, I think it's because this is actually formulated with a lot of essential oils. It's also got some alcohols in there, and that's where the balance lies, because alcohol in sunscreen, one, helps to preserve it, but also helps with that skin-like finish where it's not overly greasy. So here's what it looks like on my skin with the wear test. So this is what one application of the Moist Sun Serum looks like. Definitely dewy, definitely hydrated and nourished. And when I touch it, there is a little bit of that oily feeling. So I think the essential oils of this formula definitely make it great for dry skin types even. So this is how it looks like with makeup on, the same makeup I've been wearing all week to shoot this. And it sat really well under that makeup because it's fluid and it works in really well. However, I did realize that my powder did stick to my face a lot easier yeah, so it was a little bit more of that wet texture. And then I did, while I was blending in my concealer, get some in my eye and then the sunscreen went in my eye and then it was kind of like fuming burning. But you know, I don't think that's just this sunscreen. It's just kind of with all chemical sunscreens that can be that issue. So yeah, all in all, it looks pretty good. So we'll see how it looks in about two hours. And so if you have oily skin, I just don't know if I'll be wearing this during the summer compared to the other ones that I'll be talking about. But if you have drier, dehydrated skin, I think you'll actually really love this one. Checking in about two hours later and I just wanna show you how glossy my face looks. My makeup is still on and everything. However, I am truly glazed donut. So that is the look you're going for. I think this is beautiful. But yes, as I said before, I think it's definitely good for like dry and combination normal skin, but for oily, you're definitely gonna look like me. Now, my final thoughts. Consistency is one, because it is a true gel serum. The stickiness, I would say, is a 3.5. The thing is, it's not sticky. It just leaves an oily film. The shine factor, I would say, is an eight. It's pretty up there, I would say. Invisibility, it is zero, because it's completely invisible.
What's the difference between physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens? So physical sunscreens are also known as mineral, and this is because the primary UV filters are either titanium oxide or zinc oxide, or even a combination of both. These are great, especially for sensitive skin types or those with irritated and compromised skin barriers. But the major con is that they can have a thicker texture, leave a white cast, and that's also why they're usually in tinted formulations to try and mask that whiteness. So it's not a great option for those of you with deep skin tones. Then chemical sunscreens use primary UV filters, including oxybenzone, avobenzone, homosalate, octanoxate, and Korean sunscreens tend to fall into this category, but they also have their own UV filters, including Tinasorb and Mexerol UV blockers. And these apparently have larger molecule sizes, so they don't penetrate the skin as much, making them potentially less irritating. So normally chemical sunscreens are great for all skin types, especially if you're looking for something with a nice invisible texture without a white cast. But the con is that it can irritate more sensitive skin types or be irritating to the eye area. And we have a tip for the eyes in just a bit. Alrighty, next one is from one of my favorite brands. This is the Haruharu Wonder. They came out with two sunscreens. One is the chemical and one is the physical. So this is the Black Rice Moisture Airy Fit Daily Sunscreen SPF 50 plus PA++++. So this says that it's non-greasy and leaves a velvet finish. And can I tell you, they are spot on. This comes out in a pump form and it's a soft, creamy texture. So it essentially feels like a moisturizer and it's very silky and lightweight. The finish, as this says, is very velvet and it's true to the name. It's satin, it's second skin. It really is. The standout qualities of this is that it's fragrance free and essential oil free. And then on top of that, it's got ceramides, niacinamide and the rice bran, which is subtly brightening and just helps to even out our skin tone. Hello guys, so I've just been filming at home today. So it's just this overall, very even like satin glow and I've been like sweating up a storm because it's been super humid today. Nothing that's too like gleaming and oily and glowy where even my t-zone is quite even. So that's what I love about these kind of cream lotion formulas. If you can't tolerate chemical sunscreens, what I love is that they actually just created the same formula with mineral or physical UV filters. So as you can see, it's still really blendable. It will leave a little bit of a glow, but it's not chalky or dry. So final thoughts, there was no pilling. Consistency of this one is six. It is a lightweight cream. And then the stickiness is who, it really is velvet. It settles down to be beautiful. The shine factor is like two, once again, skin-like, but moisturized. And the invisibility is zero because this is the chemical one. How long does SPF last and how often do I reply? So the general rule is to reapply your sunscreen every two hours, especially if you're outdoors and exposed to direct light. And if you're swimming or sweating, you wanna find sunscreens that are labeled with water resistant and sweat proof because those have gone through a completely separate testing to make sure that it is. And if you're wondering what the SPF on the bottle means, it's actually used to calculate how long that sunscreen will protect our skin before it starts to burn. So for example, let's say our skin can be in the sun for 10 minutes minutes before it burns. With an SPF 30, that means it's 10 times 30. So we can be in the sun for 300 minutes until our skin will start to burn again. But keep in mind, this is just an approximation and everyone's skin type and skin tone and color will be different and varies. So when in doubt, just reapply. All right, now let's move on to a brand that I haven't talked about for a while, but it's Purito. I'm sure you guys have seen this. This is the Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen SPF 50 PA++++. So just in terms of like UV protection, they're all competing on the same wavelength. So this is a chemical sunscreen that's designed for oily, normal combination skin types that has a non-stick formula and a zero white cast. So the first impression texture is a lightweight formula. So with this one, I realized the texture of it changes as you let it settle onto to your face to give that final finish. One thing to note about this formula is it's got an ingredient called Tinasorb M. So Tinasorb S is a UV filter that a lot of the Korean sunscreens use, which give it that invisible finish, which is like the beauty of Josan. This has Tinasorb 
PM. And what that is, according to Glow by Ramon, is actually an insoluble filter. So it doesn't break down when you apply it, which then gives this a very light and very subtle whitish aura when you first put it on. What I noticed about this one is that it's super blendable, super moisturizing, but in terms of blendability, this one does settle down to dry a little bit faster than something that's more of like a gel cream. Now the finish of this one is that it actually gives a radiant glow. So it's not completely dewy and oily, but it's also not as skin-like and velvet matte as the Haru Haru. And going back to like the finish, I think what makes this less mattifying, it's got vitamin and eat. It's got ceramides as well as alpha bisabolol. So bisabolol is actually an extract of chamomile, which gives it that calming, soothing quality. But what that also does is actually create a more dewy finish and is a little bit more glowy than the Haru Haru. You can see that it's got just a little bit of radiance, but it's not overly shiny. It's not sticky either or like greasy, but there's overall just a very nice glow on the skin. And unlike other sunscreens where you touch your skin after you apply it, it's like full on greasy. This is actually like kind of mattified. It, it doesn't come off as oil. What's interesting about the Purity sunscreen is they're actually made in-house. So you can think of it like Decium. They make everything within their own brands, especially after the whole, you know, sunscreen gate debacle with Purito. They've tested this and it's now approved for more than SPF 50. And on top of that, they also don't have anything like silicas in here. So there's no ingredients to kind of absorb oil, which is why it gives that more healthy radiant finish rather than straight up velvet matte. Hello, so checking in for the Purito. This is actually closer to probably three and a half hours later. I've been sweating. It is so humid and it's over cast it's like actually looking more dewy and glowy than i would normally hope but it looks good so as you can see it's definitely not like mattifying but it is kind of even also i thought this would be a good opportunity to remind you guys that even when it's overcast and it looks like there's no sun it's like straight up uv rays so definitely make sure you wear your sunscreen on overcast and cloudy days because that's when the sun can strike out of nowhere and then you're hit with a sunburn and you don't even know what happened so my final thoughts it's alcohol free and this one has no scent there was also no pilling the consistency i would say is about 4.5 it really is kind of like that gel cream texture the stickiness of this is about 2.5 I would give this a shine factor of five, and then the invisibility I would say is a 2.5 because of that Tina Sorbem. Next question, how do I apply around the eyes? So if lotion sunscreens tend to aggravate or irritate your eye area, sun sticks are great because they don't run all over the place. So what you wanna do is apply your lotion sunscreen as normal all over the face, but avoiding the eye area, and then take a sun stick and apply that under the eyes and around the eyes, then gently dabbing it into the skin with your fingers. And while researching, I found this really interesting one from Aquel. It's a three-in-one sun stick that's formulated specifically for the delicate eye areas, but can also be used for touch-ups during the day and it feels like a really soft and moisturizing balm. It brightens, moisturizes, and adds protection. And this one's got SPF 50 plus, and it is a physical sunscreen because the UV filter is zinc oxide. So that's why it's good for sensitive eyes if you want touch-ups on the cheeks or freckling areas throughout the day. So I found this on Amazon, it's $25. Moving on to the next one. Gosh, I'm excited about this, guys. This is a newer a brand that I haven't talked about. It's their Heartleaf Silky Moisture Sun Cream, and this has SPF 50, PA++++. So this is a chemical sunscreen. First up, texture. It is not lying when it says it's a silky moisture sun cream. That's exactly right. Like a gel lotion, as soon as you blend it into the skin, poof. It's like there's no whiteness, there's no streakiness. It is so blendable, it is so soft that I think all skin types will enjoy this. It looks moisturized, but it's not greasy, and it doesn't feel like there's a film on my face whatsoever. This is alcohol-free, fragrance-free, and their main ingredient is the heart leaf, which is actually Hortunia cortada, and that's something that we see a lot in Korean ingredients for soothing and calming the skin, whether it's redness or just like inflammation, anything like that. This one I feel like is just the perfect 
cream lotion texture while being so lightweight and giving you a very healthy skin finish. And I don't know if you guys have realized, but sometimes with lightweight serum consistencies of sunscreen, it can actually leave your skin feeling more oily than a actual cream or lotion. So that's where the balancing really comes into play and what I feel like is the most interesting about sunscreens. So you just saw, as soon as it hit my skin, it went invisible. It was like lotion and then whoosh. So nice. It's moisturized, it feels like nothing. It's like skin and it's not overly glowy. How good is that? But, and it reminds me of the Haru Haru in that you can once again just skip your moisturizer. Okay guys, checking in, I just wanna show you how good this looks, right? It's not overly sticky, it's not dewy, it's not oily, it's like literally perfection on the skin. Hence why I think it's the most underrated sunscreen ever. Final thoughts, pilling, none. Consistency, I would give it a five because it's a true gel lotion. It is perfectly in the middle. Sticky or tackiness, I would give it a three. It just feels like a moisturizer on your skin. Shine factor is 3.5. It's once again, just so skin-like. And then invisibility, zero. Nada, there is nothing on your skin. So I love it. <laughs> How do we remove sunscreens correctly? Devil Cleanse is the way to go. So first start off with an oil-based cleanser. This dissolves everything so you don't need to work as hard or be as rough on your skin. And then the second cleanse uses a water-based cleanser that washes away any other remnants that are still left on our skin that could potentially be clogging our pores. I honestly can't remember the last time I didn't double cleanse, especially after wearing sunscreen. So guys, get on it. <laughs> now lastly, our honorable mentions. These ones, I put it here because they're fabulous. They're lightweight. I think everyone will enjoy them. There's a reason why they're popping off everywhere. Both of these upon application are one of the lightest consistency sunscreens I've ever tried. And to me, they both give that radiant dewy finish. Among, you know, the ingredients that they formulate with, the UV filter in the Round Lab one does contain the Tinosorb S, which is why upon blending it in in the first few seconds, you will see a little bit of that whitish film that completely blends out if you have anywhere from light to medium to even like tan skin types. I both give these a finish of about 6.5 on the shine factor because it is glowy, it's healthy, but it's not sticky, so I still really enjoy it. And the consistency of both of these are about 1.5 because it is really just a gel serum. It don't laugh. I've really learned to enjoy these creams because from this whole sunscreen ranking, we can see that these creams, even though they apply like a lotion, it actually leaves a more matte velvet finish versus some of these more lightweight sun essences, which can actually leave our skin more glowy. So that's what I've learned to realize in this video, just testing out all these sunscreens. And then I feel like the numbers in one sits perfectly in between, like hard to fold. And one of the takeaways I want you guys to think about is that heavy, oily, and dewy are not the same thing whatsoever. You can be dewy and lightweight, but it can also be dewy and oily and greasy. And creams don't mean that it's thicker on the skin or creams don't mean that it leaves the skin oilier. Um, just in the same way that essences aren't always lightweight. Essences can leave the skin looking greasy. Hopefully I've helped you guys assess some of the ones that you've been eyeing. So I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye.